All right, here's your homework for arithmetic series. Now, a series means you're adding up the terms. A sequence, you just have each term with commas in between. So it says, find the partial sum of the given sequence. So I want to find the first nine terms, and how would I do it? What's the formula? What do I need to know? So I need to know how many terms there are. There's nine. So I go nine, and then I take that answer, divide it by two. Then I need to know the first term, and I need to know the last term. Oh, but do I know the last term? No. So what do I need to find before I can use that formula? And the answer is I need to find the, not, the last term. So to find the ninth term, I need a little formula to help me out. So the formula is going to be a1 plus, now I'm going up by 7 each time, and I'm trying to find the ninth term. So that's what it looks like. So 8 times 7 is 56, take away 9 is 47. So that's what I do. So negative 9 plus 47 divided by 2 times 9. Next one, the seventh term. So I don't know the seventh term, so let's find that. I need the first term and the last term. So for the seventh term, I need a, a rule, so it's 27. What am I adding each time to try to figure this out? So if you can't see it clearly, you're going to have to subtract two consecutive ones to be able to see it. So if I get common denominators here, I need to multiply it times 4. So that's 80 and 20, it's 108. So 108 over 27, 103 over 27. I get 5 over 27 in terms of what it is. So the rule is 5 over 27 and then n minus 1. So that's going to give me the last term. So if I do the math there, the last term and reduce it down is 39 over 2. And then what formula would I use? I have seven terms divided by 2 and go first plus the last. You can use a calculator and then do the math. So in this case, the answer is 651 over 4. Or you could write it as a decimal. What does it be as a decimal? 162.75. For number three, it says add the first six terms together. So I know there's six terms divided by two. The first term, plug in one, and you get four over three. The last term, plug in six, and you get 24 over eight. That's also three. And then you can use your math, uh, use a calculator if you want. And the answer would be, let's see what answer I get. So 3 and then 4 thirds plus 3. Oh, you know what I did? The last one, this one obviously is not uh, arithmetic. So we can only use the series, the formula, if it is arithmetic, if it's linear. So in this case, if it's not linear, I should check to see if the one before was linear. It's not. So like the one before, what do I do to get each one, right?
What was if I got common denominator? So it was like 108. So like 27 times 4, 108 over 4, you got 5 over 4, right? No, it is good. I just got the wrong one. So the common difference was negative, this is, I don't know where this came from, over 27? I don't know what I was thinking. Anyways, it's... <laughs> This is 108 over 4 and 103 over 4. So when I do that, it should have been neg uh, negative 5 over 4. So this should be negative 5 over 4. So the last term then would make 39 over 2. This is still the right answer, but I didn't get it the right way. This is not even arithmetic. I need to find each term and then add them up. So I'm just going to do it on a separate piece of paper right here. So the first term I just said was 4 over 3. Plug in 2 and you get 8 over 4. Plug in 3 and you get 12 over 5. Uh, 4 you get 16 over 6. 5 you get 20 over 7. 6 you get 24 over 8. So Put that in your calculator, and you get 499 over 35. So if it's not arithmetic, we can't use that. And we know it's arithmetic if it's linear. Anyways, so that's why that answers that. All right, moving on. I can do better. Here we go. First, this is linear. Yes, right? It's arithmetic because the degree is 1. It's linear. All right, so what do I need to know? How many terms are there? Well, if I start at 1 and end at 9, there are 9 terms. So we have nine terms divided by two. I need to know the first term, so plug in one. That gives you negative one. And I need to know the last term, so plug in nine, and it's uh, three times nine, 27. So that is negative 25. And that's it. And that gives you the answer, negative 117. Five, not linear, not arithmetic. So I gotta write it out, oh my goodness. I gotta write out all 15 terms and then add them up. So plug in 1, and you get negative 7. Plug in the next one, 2, you get negative 4. 3, you get 1. Then 8. Then 17. Then 28. Then 41. Then 56. And then 73. Then 92. And just plug in the next number until I get to the 15 numbers. 113. 136. 161. 188 and 217 and then add it all up. So completely tedious in terms of doing it. So number six, not arithmetic. So it says seven fifths times that. So the bottom tells you where you're starting. So we're starting at two. So start with seven fifths and plug in two. So you get 6 take away 4, and then you keep that pattern going. Plug in 3, and you get 0. Then negative 4. Then negative 10. Then negative 18. Negative 28. Negative 40. Negative 54. Negative 70. Negative 88. And then finally, negative 108. So you started with 2, and then you plug in 12. And once you plug in 12 and get a number, that's it. And then you can put that in your calculator and you can get negative 585.2. All right, one more time, then we'll focus on arithmetic. Here we have negative three. We plug six first in. So you get five over six plus six. Common denominators. You can use your calculator, it will do it for you. And then plug in seven, plug in eight, plug in nine. And keep getting common denominators. You can let the calculator help you with it. The calculator will automatically do common denominators for you when it does it. If you don't go dime and enter, it'll just do the common denominators as a fraction. So keep plugging in. Stop when you plug in 13. So I plug in 12, now plug in 13. 
you plug in 6, 7, 8, 9, this is just in lowest terms, 11, 12, and 13, then your answer as a fraction would be 613,701. This would be total calculator work, and then you could use your go diamond enter and you can uh, figure it out as a decimal. Number eight, now finally we got arithmetic. So now we can use our formula and know that we're using it. So for these, the formula is again, n over two a1 plus an. So if I want to find the sum of the first 15, I have 15 terms divided by two. The first term is 29. I don't know the 15th term. So I'm just gonna plug it right in. So the rule would be to find the 15th term is 29 that's the one, first one, plus, what's the common difference? Well, it's negative four, so it'd be negative four. And then I wanna find uh, 15 minus one, and that'd be in one step. So this part is like using the rule. So I'm just plugging in what I don't know. So the first term is 29, the common difference is negative four, and then it's 15 minus one, because it's the 15th term. And then put it all in your calculator, and the answer is 15. Number nine. 20. So the setup to find the first 20 numbers. How many terms you have divided by two, the first term, plus the last term. So I don't know it, so again, I'm just gonna make, go as I go along here. So the rule would be the first term, 13.1. The common difference, we're going up by 5.6, and then it's 20 take away one. And then put that all in your calculator in one step. And you get 1,326. Number 10. Find the sum of the first 17 terms. So we have 17 terms divided by two. The first term is negative eight. I don't know the 17th term, so I'm gonna do the rule. So I'm adding six every time. Sorry, so we have negative eight, the common difference, 17 take away one, and then put that all in your calculator at once. So this second part is just what an is. It's using the rule and plugging in the numbers from the sequence. And you get the answer 680. Please use your calculator. 11. 11 terms. So the setup is 11 divided by two. That's the first term. To find the term I'm looking for, I start with three. Is it going up or down? It's going down. Get common denominators. So three would be like 18 over three, six. So it's seven over six, and it's going down. So it's negative seven over six, and then 11 minus one, and then put that all in your calculator. And I get negative 187 over six. All right, turn the page. All right, someone's at the door, but you know what? Like the, like the mailman, the show goes on, whether someone knocks on the door or not. So, turn the page, here we go. Hey, I love this. This is sigma notation, or you can call it sum notation. That's a Greek letter sigma. And so, we still want the things we need. It's like, I need to know how many terms there are. So from one to 21, there's 21 terms. I need to know the first term. So plug in one and you get 12. I need to know the last term. So you plug in 21, so five times 21 uh, plus seven. That gives you 112. And then use the formula. So 21 divided by two, 12 plus 112. And you get 1,302. Here again, how many do I have? 14 terms, plug in one, and you get negative five, plug in 14. 
8 times 14, and it's negative plus 3, so it's negative 109. Again, you can use your calculator. And then the formula is uh, the number of terms divided by 2, the first term plus the last one, and then that's it. Again, how I know this is arithmetic, where I can use that formula, is that these are all linear expressions. The degree is 1, that exponent you don't see. All right, so I need to know how many terms there are. There's 39. I need to know the first term. So when I plug in 1, 3 fifths take away 9. You can use a calculator if you want. Get common denominators. Negative 42 over 5. I need to know the last term, so I plug in 39. Again, you can use your calculator. And the last term is 72 over 5. And then what's the setup? Use your calculator. So 39 over 2, the first term and the last term. And then use your calculator. And when you use the TI-89, just put parentheses around each fraction as you go about it. Like you won't probably even need to do it in terms of this. Get the same answer. And it's 117. Number 15, 5 to 26. So to do this, we actually subtract and add 1. That's the counting principle. So if I want to know from 5 to 26 how many numbers are, you subtract and add 1. It's called the counting principle. So 26 take away 5 is 21. Add one more, and there's 22 terms. In this case, the first term, you plug in 5. So use your calculator after you plug in 5, and you get negative 69 over 7. Uh, plug in 26. Again, use your calculator. You get negative 153 over 7. And then the formula is how many terms you have divided by 2. And then you take the first term and the last term together. And then get your answer. Number 16. So how many terms I have? I subtract. So I go 32, take away 3, and then I add 1 to it. That's the counting principle. So I have, uh, what is it, 20, 30? 30 terms. The first term, you plug in uh, 3. So the bottom tells you what to plug in first. Common denominators, you can use a calculator. And the first term is negative uh, 5 over 2. Then plug in 32, and again, you can use a calculator after you plug in 32. And you get negative 109 over 3. And then the formula, so how many terms you have divided by 2, negative 5 over 2, subtract 109 over 3, you use a calculator and you get negative 582.5, go diamond enter at the end. All right, last one like this. 19 to 7, so subtract, 19 take away 7 is 12, add one more for the counting principle, and you have 13 terms. Uh, plug in 7 for the first term, 77 take away 6. Plug in 19, so 11 times 19 take away 6, 203. Feel free to use a calculator. How many terms you have divided by 2, and then there are two first and last, 71 and 203. Use a calculator, and you get 1,781. Good job. All right, let's finish off with some stories. Erin is making a friendship bracelet for a fundraiser. She made seven bracelets on the first day, 11 on the second, 15 on the third, going up by four each time, arithmetic. If this pattern continues, find the total amount. That's the adding part of, of after uh, four weeks. So first of all, four weeks... This is in days, right? How many days are we talking about? 28 days. So how many terms we have is 28 divided by 2. On the first day, she made 7. On the last day, she made a lot more. And we don't know it, so we're just going to plug it right in and then use her calculator. So we're going to use that 7, and then the common difference is 4, and then 28 minus 1, 
and then put that all in the calculator. So this whole thing represents a n. And if you do that, she made 1,708 bracelets in total. It's a lot of bracelets. Lance created a tower with playing cards. He used 63 cards on the bottom row and then had three fewer cards going away. If he used six cards on the top row, how many cards did he use to build the tower? So let's look at that. All right. So we know A1 is 63, and we know the common difference is negative 3. keeps going down by 3. And we know the last term, we'll call that AN, is uh, 6. But we don't know is how many terms is that, like what term that is uh, for 6. Because that N there would tell me how many there are in total, then I could use the formula. So we're going to use the rule a n uh, 63 minus uh, 3 n minus 1. We're going to plug in, so we know this is 6, but we don't know what term that is. So I need to solve for n. So I'm going to subtract 63. I'm going to divide by negative 3. That goes in evenly. That's what, 19? and then add one. So that means there are 20 rows of cards. So now that I know this, it gets easy. So now to figure it out, 20 divided by two, I have 63 cards, and then I have six on the last one. Put it all together and you get 690. That's how many cards were used in total. Uh, the Jefferson Theater contains 2,508 seats. The first row has 12. Each row after has four additional more. And then the previous, determine the number of rows. Determine the number of rows in the theater. So there's a total number of 2,508 seats. If I go N, which is the total number of rows, divided by 2, I know the first row has 12. And then I don't know the last one. So I need to actually use the rule with N in it. So the last one would be AN or the last, how many seats are in the last row? Now AN would be found as you take 12 and then the common difference means we're adding 4 each time and then N minus 1. So that's just AN by itself. But now I have an equation to solve for N. It's going to end up being a quadratic. So what things I can do? I can multiply both sides by 2. That gives me 5,016. I can combine like terms in here. So I have 12. Here I have 12, 4n minus 4. So keep going. That's 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. Take away 4. So 12, 20 is 20 plus 4n. There's still an n in front. So I'm just combining like terms. Then I got 20n plus 4n squared. So there's your quadratic. I'm hoping, yeah, 4 goes into everything evenly. So let me just do that. So I'm dividing everything by 4. 
then I'm just going to make it equal to zero and factor it. Hey, now's a good time to either use your calculator to solve it or to factor it. So use the factor button on your calculator. And you would get Weird, it's not even factorable. So, let me show you in the calculator how you would solve it. I mean, the answer key is how would it, you have a story where the, it wouldn't be an even number for like the last row for a theater. Like if you're adding six every time, you're not gonna have decimal. Anyways, number, maybe there's some extra seats somewhere else, or less. Anyway, let me show you in the calculator. Um, to solve something with this calculator, I want you to press F2 algebra and then go to solve and then type in what you see use x because it's easier on your calculator so x squared plus 5x subtract 1254 then you have to actually press comma so once you type it in the comma is right here underneath the t so you got to press comma and then x again and make sure you're using the x that's not the multiplying sign. So it's the x above the equal sign on the left. So make sure you're using this x that's above the equal sign, not the multiplying one. Close the parentheses, diamond enter. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I didn't go equal to zero. Silly. So equal to zero, diamond enter. And then what do you get? Oh, I do get an answer that's straight up. So I get negative 38. On the answer key, they get a decimal key. I don't know where that is, but this was obvious. It is factorable. So it's negative 38 or 33. Now, obviously, we're going to cross out the negative answer because you can't have a negative number of rows in the theater. So it's positive 33. Let me show you one more thing before the math goes out here. Um, if I just wanted to factor it, I could also have gone F2 and fact. Oops. I can go F2 and factor, and then I would just type in again x squared. This one I don't need a comma, plus 5x, subtract 1254. And then you could also just press factor, and then you can see the answers are 33 and negative 38. Same thing, right? So it's nice what the calculator can do. So the answer is how many rows are in a the theater? And the answer is there's 33 rows. So ignore the answer key that's in the folder, because whoever did that answer key, not me. Did it wrong. But it's 33 rows in the theater. That makes sense. G math. Overnight.